very good evening everyone glad to have you back with us after a short break and hopefully you had a nice holiday uh, full of fun and frolic but safe as well and of course onwards we go uh, in this journey of exploring uh, startups and the world of startups and the world of entrepreneurship and of course as in i was talking about actually his interviews are more about how entrepreneurial he is they were also testing how good he can think on his feet right so um my four words today sorry when i four words excited to be here not necessarily describing me but would really really uh, glad to be here uh, with all of you and thank you many of you are have been here throughout the series some of you may be joining uh, midway but like, as we've been saying all along thank you appreciate this partnership that we're building and if you're joining midstream don't worry we will actually start with a recap very very soon but before moving forward i want do want to acknowledge a special day that we all celebrated yesterday and and a special day i think in in the fabric of startups uh women startups are rising rapidly around the world definitely in india and the little logo that you see on the slide wep actually is an initiative of the niti of niti aayog it called women entrepreneurship platform so they've actually created a platform or a system to encourage women entrepreneurs from all walks of life so you know big cities as well as distant towns and and villages uh the platform provide the community of of women entrepreneurs who want to encourage and help others uh there's mentoring there's funding options there's support there's uh customer connections there's options to expand globally so there's a lot that i think the platform brings of course the platform also continues to be enriched as we go along so strongly advise everyone to take a look at that wep you can type wep women entrepreneurship platform niti aayog and it'll take you right there uh so that's one comment we wanted to share with you that we we as as wadhwani foundation believe that this entrepreneurial spirit is in all of us and as you read what's on the screen here which is from reed hoffman who by the way is is the co-founder of linkedin and, and a very very um successful venture capitalist now uh, in the us you know being entrepreneurial as we've been discussing all along is is a way of life being entrepreneurial is how we do things as a student being entrepreneurial is what will see us through if we if we take up a job or pursue an mba and of course if we ever and whenever we want to start our own uh, startup slash venture so once again excited to be here and onward we go uh, today's conversation takes us into the realm of um, business models and it's a very it's a very um, interesting phrase to be honest because one hears it in in fairly casual conversations on and off so you may have wondered for example uh, you know cred we all we all seen the crazy ads they've been putting up uh, through through uh, various uh, ipls and other platforms you know people say what really is the business model of cred all they do is facilitate credit card collections but you got to do under got to go underneath the hood to really figure it out um uh, and there there's some interesting combinations around reward points corporate partnerships and and credit is apparently figured out a way to make all of this work and they are of course a unicorn now um whatsapp that's often discussed as well hey what is really the business model of whatsapp for something that started out as free then the founders in the early days thought they could possibly charge us a dollar a year and then the big acquisition happened and 14 billion dollars down uh whatsapp is free to all of us still till today as individual consumers so what really is a business model well they are actually they had, you may have seen a lot of whatsapps coming in from corporate these days in the promotions or take time to take the feedback so business community on whatsapp is actually a new thing that's that's risen quite rapidly over the last 3 uh, 4 years and you'd be surprised to know whatsapp had revenues of a billion dollars almost a billion dollars last year of course coming from business consumers and not people like you and i so we are going to talk about business model but i also want to share with you that business models usually get discussed in a rather narrow uh, realm look at the two examples that are shared i was really talking about how revenues generated across these two startups cred and whatsapp 
but there's more to a business model. Business model is very nuanced as it is a little more expensive than what is normally discussed. So we will see that. We will see what is this animal called business models and how can you really create one for yourself and your startup, so-called Canvas. We're going to get there. And uh, again, those of us who are joining us uh, afresh, we continue to invest in all things entrepreneurship at Vadhani Foundation. We are really, really excited to bring up the spirit of learning and awareness amongst the youth and for those who really want to pursue this as a life option, really, not even as a uh, career option. We're happy to provide all kinds of support, which we will, of course, get to towards the end of the session today. We are very live uh, and, and rich platform that we're building for you. And we will, of course, do a quick walkthrough towards the end of the session. As far as our journey together goes, well, guess what, folks? We are actually, we've just crossed the, the halfway mark. Session five is where we are today. And just a quick reminder, we will share dates and times, of course, with you in a, in a little while. But next week is kind of a pause and reflect mode in our journey. Uh, that's your Ask Me Anything AMA open house session. Uh, so really, all that you wanted to ask about entrepreneurship but didn't know where to go, who to ask, that's the session. Uh, we're also hoping that, you know, since you've been associated with us for the last few weeks, you've actually taken some time to think about your own venture. So wherever you are in that journey, you're still ideating, you're still figuring out if this thing is for you, or you actually failed on a problem that you wish to solve and you, have, you, have, you do have an idea of a uh, sound possibly crazy but super innovative product, please walk into that session. We'd love to have a chat with you. And uh, as Vinayak was uh, sharing with you, uh, this session onwards, we will continue to have you chat away as we interact with you, but we'd also love for you to speak up. So um, raise your hand and the mic's definitely going to come to you then. Okay, we are creating this future together. As I said, the future around entrepreneurship with a startup that we are trying to build together. If not build ourselves, at least learn from how others are doing. And in the series, we've talked to three founders. One is FinTech, the other is Medical Tech, third one is Assistive Technology. Uh, all very interesting, all, all trying to solve some real problems. The one case study basis our interactions will kind of build now and take it throughout through the series through till session nine is around education. Why? Because A, it's a real example. I may twist a few details here and there because they did get acquired by um, by large tech unicorn. You can guess the name in a private deal uh, just before COVID. Uh, but education is what we can all connect with. We are, we are students today. We've been students in schools earlier. Hence, we will try to do this journey of two co-founders and who have, who have, of course, uh, gone through the education system in India School College. And now our parents of kids, and now they're seeing their kids go through schooling and there are some red flags in their head. So step one, really, was them to say, listen, there is a problem. We faced it. We see it around us. The kids are just disengaged. They're either overwhelmed or stress, but definitely not learning. They may be mugging things up, but are they really learning with curiosity? Probably not. Kids themselves are very hassle. Parents, of course, are super hassle. This, this problem, really, we can see it. So they wanted to do something about it. So that's what they did. Nailed the problem, and we've shared this canvas earlier, so I won't get into detail. By the way, all templates we're going to share with you today and going forward are all on the platform. Both the blank template, plus some example, plus some uh, instructions and how to fill uh, various facets, uh, various parts of each each template. So they said, okay, there's a problem around education, but you want to make sure this problem is not just, you know, we feel, the two of us feel, or maybe six of our best friends feel, or maybe you know, 15 members of our family see. Is it really as pervasive as we think it is? So rather than assume, they went around and talked to over 100 uh, parents and over 150 plus kids who were in schools and said, listen, uh, what are you seeing? What are you learning? How are things with you? Uh, for example, they, they talk to mothers, fathers, children. They even talk to grandparents at home. They talk to teachers. I'm going to share some examples of what they, what they found. So 
in this example, of course, they, as they spoke to the mother, they said, listen, I want my kid to do well in school. Not only that, I want my kid to become a good person, really, as broad as that, and have a good life. And I'm not sure the current system is helping me get there, get my kids along the way. Kids, of course, kids are kids. And uh, they said, listen, I can learn. I want to learn, but it's not fun. I just feel loaded, that's all. Uh, I just, I, I wish there were a better way of, way in which I could be engaged more with my studies and books and curricula and all that other stuff. So they actually validated that the problem was not just in their heads, but um, but real. And they talked to some real parents, real kids, real family members and teachers to say, okay, so that is step two. Validate the problem exists, it's big enough, and it's worth solving. Then they said, okay, we're still figuring out what to do with it. But in this figuring out mode, before we do any product, surveys, coding, can we just figure out what we need? They did a very bare bones calculation of what they needed, both in terms of money, technology, skills, hardware. You see it right there in front of you. So they didn't just jump in. They paused and said, okay, do we have enough to get started with? And with those resources, in turn, their own skills, et cetera, et cetera, they actually created an AR, VR based digital content library. So there's a headset that they innovated on. There's content that they created. As you see in the screen, uh, things came alive. Okay, can't see. Vinay, can you help me with this? Vinay, can you hear me? Ashish is saying that there's some video in the middle. Is that is that my video? Is that the issue? When I Karthi, can you hear me? Ah, oh, yes. okay. Ashish, yes, yes, Ashish. Okay, Ashish. Uh, uh, I'm with you. Uh, I'll try yeah. to turn my video off wherever there's content in my side of the box. With you. Thank you. Uh, hopefully, it's okay for now. So, really, step four is the use the resources to develop something that made learning come alive. People could touch, feel move things around, it's three-dimensional, it is experiential, and it's like playing a video game. And of course, along the way, the kids are learning. But then they said, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. We think it's cool, but do kids think it's cool? Do parents think it's cool and not just cool, but helping my kids learn? So they actually went out back to the parents, some old, some new parents, some new kids, and say, okay, we got this somewhat clunky set of, uh, set of uh, headset, we got maybe you know, 10 chapters and not, not 100. Can you try it out for us? And so-called minimal viable product was taken to the market. They got tons, they got tons of feedback. What you see is actually one tenth of what they got. And they did multiple iterations. I've just summarized it here for you. And the feedback, very, very important, is not just in terms of how cool and good the product is, but what is the market willing to bear? Will people pay for it? If yes, how much? How easy was it, was, was it to reach these parents who would actually buy it for their kids? Uh, okay, I know you can't see Ashish, so I'm going to go off air for a little while. So they went went ahead and talked to a lot of parents and kids with their devices and solutions and software and got tons of feedback, which they, of course, then... <laughs> Thank you. No problem, Ashish. Um, this will get a little break from me as I go off air. So finally, they said, okay, we've actually taken all that feedback. We now, they worked on the product for a good eight months after that. And then came, they thought they were ready to go to the market. Along the way, of course, I'm not saying it, it here, but we did it earlier. They mapped the competition. They figured out how big the market was. All that was done. So now they're saying, okay, what do we do next? Actually, to be fair, while the whole MVP was being developed, validated, and one co-founder was looking at it. There was another co-founder who said, okay, let me start looking at the business side of things. So what we are, what we're going to see linearly today actually started happening in parallel with the MVP process and which is how it ought to be. But because we're discussing across, you know, uh, uh, very explicit uh, sessions, you will see this linearity possibly. Uh, Ashish, okay. Ashish, wherever they, I'm covering the content, I will definitely take it off. Okay, so this is where we are. So we have this startup here, 
who's uh, who's taken this journey so far and i'm sharing this because you can try all of these things yourselves we've shared a few templates all of the stuff i repeat over and over again all of these journeys case studies blank template instructions videos are all on the platform that you have used for logging in today uh, so what are we going to do today well we're going to move, keep moving forward good question uh, okay while while i can still manage to not block uh, so we're going to actually see how do we take this journey forward happening a little bit in parallel with all that you saw earlier so we're going to talk about product market fit we're going to talk about customer being the core of all that we do and it's not a point in time it's a philosophy and the big uh, center piece today is looking at a business model canvas called the one we're going to use is called the lean canvas and see how we can fill it up through, uh, through different pieces. Okay, we, without any further ado, let me jump in. Okay, folks, time to, okay, chat. We'll do the mic a little later. Please uh, be ready to chat. Faster fingers first. Have you heard this term product market fit? If yes, what do you think it is? Anyone? What is product? Market fit. Ashish, you got to be the first one to respond. And if, if you haven't heard it, just say no. It's okay. That's fine. We'll explain it. Ashish, others? Okay. Ashish is typing. Let's wait. Ah, uh, is our solution acceptable to a consumer who's having a problem? Okay, close Ashish. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. And uh, yeah, so, you know, just like business model we discussed earlier, it was a little bit of a misconstrued notion. Product market also tends to get a little narrow focus. We're going to see slightly differently. Let's see. Okay, once again, folks, you got to type in now. You have a fit. Fit as in things when they come together, right? You see an idea founder fit A. A describes which of the other four? One, two, three, or four. Take a moment to read. Is A about one, which is company processes or scaling? Is it about products that we're doing well? Is it about founder being connected with this idea? Or is it about getting sales and traction going? What do you think idea founder fit means? Anyone, you can type away. Is there one? Okay, just say one, two, or three, or four. Let's see if that match happens. Okay. Sugumar says three. Okay. Thank you, Sugumar. Anybody else? And three actually is correct. So we're going to look at this definition. Sunita is also typing three. So we're going to look at market, product market fit a little bit more holistically. Okay. Absolutely right. Idea founder fit really is all about. How does this idea, this problem, this space fit with what I want to do in my life? Perfect. What is B mapping to? One, two, or four? What do you think? Mukesh says two. And absolutely right, Mukesh. Thank you. This is really about, is our solution solving the problem? Thank you, Sukumar. Is our solution solving the problem that our customers had? Or we, we, we kind of understood the customer problem, but went off on a tangent in our solution, or maybe never understood the problem. Okay. Revenue organization fit means what? It's either one or four. <laughs> uh, Mukesh. Okay. Mukesh, if I hesitated at one, obviously the answer is four, which is that Surya Sugumar has jumped on it, but thank you. Nevertheless, um, it is four. And I will explain each of these. And last but not the least, of course, of course, is a growth profitability fit. So what I'm really trying to say here, let me summarize it, folks. Thank you for participating. What we're saying is a product in of itself never enters the market. There's a whole machinery of an organization that takes it there. 
the sales, the marketing, the customer support, there's operation, the money needed to do all that. There's no such thing as the independent product kind of walking out in the street and think, do I have a home here? So, so product market fit is a little more nuanced. And we suggest that all startups look at multiple fits together, uh, together, of course, trying to achieve this effect. So is the idea connected with the founder's passion and mission? One, check. Two, do we understand the problem and do our, does our solution do justice to it? Second check. Third, have we created an organization that can actually sell this and not sell this to three, four, five customers, but hundreds and thousands of customers? Of course, slowly, but, but starting slowly, but building up. And last but not the least, often ignored, you know, product market fit also can be elusive. It can be short lived. You make the first 50, 60, 100 sales and suddenly there's a value of death, so called. You got to make sure the product market fit is a sustainable um, thought process and approach, which requires, of course, iteration and changes, etc. But last but not the least, can we really become a venture that continues to grow and scale? And folks, investors, and I'm putting on my angel investor hat. I will ask the last thing first that is your business scalable, etc. But I'm also asking, expecting you to answer the other three. Did you see initial traction? How did you sell it? What did, what have the customers been telling you? What did MVP reveal? What does the early customer reveal? What is the NPS around that? Why do you want to do this for the rest of your life? So folks to build a scalable, successful business, that not just draws in customers, but actually draws in investors and say, hey, this is cool. Take our money, grow more. Takes a lot more than just a product market fit. So big message, everything revolves around customers, but it's a little more layered concept as we discussed. And this also we've been talking about, right? It all comes together beautifully. We've been discussing this across all the other sessions when a large market exists for people whom we understand. They desire this. We have the wherewithal to you know, develop the solution and take it to the market and test it. And in doing so, people are willing to pay us and hopefully pay us hand handsomely. And we have an organization and culture that's backing it all to say, okay, this is not a one hour. This is not a one person initiative. This is not one founder working 22 hours a day trying to make the sale. It's an organization, 5, 10, 15, 15, uh, 5, 10, 15. 500 people uh, coming together to make it happen. So folks, we're going to talk about how do you really get to this point? How do you get to a point where you can build something that's wide and vast? And for that, we need to answer a couple of questions. Okay, this question also comes up very, very often. What is the difference between a business plan and a business model? Business model and business model canvas. Okay, before we get into all the details, let's just understand what a plan is. Okay, can somebody tell me what a plan is? Any plan could be uh, you're planning a summer break in Goa in a few months with your friends. What is a plan? What do you think a plan has? What does it do? Thoughts? Any plan? Okay, oh, she, she is typing. Plan of any sorts. I'll give you a minute. Okay. Fixing to do something X. Okay, Ashish. Thank you. Putting different things together. Thank you, Surya. Okay, yeah, and just a couple of seconds and then we'll see what else is coming through in the chat. Okay, so plan really is these plus a few other things. So when you talk about making a, a plan to let's say go to Goa, then you actually have some kind of a goal to say, okay, we want uh, an idea of doing something in the future, mapping something. Okay, great. Now it's kind of coming together, folks. So absolutely right. A plan is some idea of what you want to do in the future, 
you know, I would go to the beach, spend seven days uh, having fun, etc., etc., discovering the cultural heritage of Goa and partying. Uh, and how are you going to get there? Right? You will have things like what dates? Do we fly or do we take the train? How much money do we need? Do we stay in a three star or a five star or a hostel? What kind of permissions do we need? All that detail coming together to make sure the plan comes alive or executed. So, plan really is our ap- approach to, as Ashish said, getting some X thing done. Hence, what is a business plan? Quick thought, what is a business plan? What is the Goa in business? Mapping, okay. Where does the business plan take us and what do you expect to find in it? Okay, which problem is the business trying to solve? Okay, correct. So a business plan typically is about where you want to take the business, usually for the next one to two years to say, okay, one such element could be we, we had 50 crores of revenue this year. Can we shoot for 70 next year? We had we had 22 branches. Can we set up 50 branches next year? We have 100 customers. Can we do 120 customers? So all of that goal of the business and how the business gets there is the business plan. And usually business plans are fairly detailed. Usually business plans are done by a lot of, not all, I would say every corporate out there, uh, which is half a decent as a business plan. What then is a business model canvas? So a business model canvas is a broader concept. It's about all the pieces that need to come together for the business to function today and for it to function tomorrow. It is truly like a jigsaw puzzle coming together. The big difference is business plans are usually made based on past data to say, okay, like I said, you know, did 100 crores, can we do 150 crores? Business model canvases or business models, especially for startups, are hypothesis based because they don't have a history. I don't know if my AR, VR sunglasses and the digital content is going to sell well. Well, the first 50 customers loved it, but the next 500, I don't know. So. Business model canvas is different from business plan. It doesn't go that much out into the future. Doesn't get into that level of detail, though, you know, marketing plan and a financial plan and a capital expansion plans, but it gives a high level strategic strategic view of what the business is looking like today. And of course, how it might shift and change in, in the months to come. Why is it important? As important as having an architect draw up a plan for a house before you lay even the first brick. This is the canvas of the house you're going to build. This is what a business model canvas does. It tells us three rooms, four rooms, two bathrooms. What's in the neighborhood? Is it east facing? Is it west facing? You know, uh, will we have enough windows? Will we have terraces? Is the entrance one entrance or two entrances? You have a shape and. Normally, when you engage an architect, I don't know if somebody, if you've ever seen this happen in your family, it's never the first plan that you like. You'll come with two, three, four, five, ten versions sometimes to say, now this looks good. Now let's commit. Similarly, a canvas is pieces of your business that will help you achieve all the fits we mentioned earlier. Serve the customers, raise, generate revenues, make profits and scale. There are many ways of doing it. Uh, It actually is a science, if you will, that's been evolving over the last 10 to 12 years. And the one in the middle, the business model canvas, uh, Austral Welders is the one that came out the first. You see an order here, left to right. Uh, There are multiple variations out there. There are many more. There are probably a dozen out there. Uh, We've arranged them in the order of how relevant they are to the stage of startup you're at. So the lean canvas, which is what we're going to use today, is for early stage startups, really, really early, early stage startups. The BMC, the one in the middle, for those who have really figured out a few things, getting into launch, early traction, and the startup operating canvas, as the name perhaps reflects, is for startups who are in post early traction, trying to now stabilize and grow their ventures. 
what kind of operational focus they need to have. We will, as I said, focus on Lean Canvas. Full thanks to Ash Moria, who's the founder behind it. And there you go, friends. This is your uh, this is your architecture map of your business. Don't worry. We're going to spend time on each of the boxes. Little time. Uh, but you'll see how they all come together. Little by little by little. But before we get into filling it up, let's, and there's some order in doing so. Let's get to a few, some conversation. Who do you think, Pepsi Black, and do notice zero sugar at the bottom, is targeted towards? Who is Pepsi trying to sell this product to? Anyone? Who would buy a Pepsi Black? Diabetic people, absolutely, Paco. What else? Who else would buy it? Okay, I see people are typing. Okay, one more response. Ah, <laughs> health conscious people, aged people. Uh, people who actually like this taste, perhaps calorie conscious, gym work, perfect example. So as you see, Pepsi has lots of drinks, right? In, 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 the, in the cola market, from Pepsi, Pepsi to water to Tropicana juices and a whole host of others. But they figured out this niche of people, whether they want to do it for fitness reasons, health reasons, or maybe uh, diabetic reasons, that this product is, is better suited. So that's the narrow market they're going after, so-called segment. Similarly, Maruti realized that there was actually a set of people out there who wanted a premium experience, not just premium car, but premium buying experience. Because over the years, Maruti has kind of become a little, at least in its brand, become a little more, little commoditized. So they came up with Nexa, which is their uh, outlet chain and, and certain products that are priced higher. Who would use this? Uh, the hint is right there on the product. Who is this for? Anybody? Who would buy this? Men. Yes. <laughs> Don't say men. Say a little bit more, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'll wait. Men. Thank you, Zuria. Ah, people who have oily skin. So could be, again, for medical reasons that have to very oily skin or could be for beauty reasons, right? For whatever whatever this product seems to do for them. So targeted at men uh, who have different needs. Actually, you're right. People who have acne and pimples. And no point for guessing this. This is a housing complex that is aged at senior citizens, that is targeted at senior citizens. So the point we're making, folks, is that for any product, any service, rather than boil the ocean, remember that phrase you used last time? It's a good idea for a startup, given our limited resources, to narrow the playing field a bit and define segments where they're going to at least do the initial launch with. So whether it is segmentation based on age, demographic, behaviors, preferences, health, uh, stage of life, you name it. There's so many examples when you start looking around you. And that is the first piece we're going to put in our canvas. If you notice right here, we said, at least this startup said, initially, we're going to look at, we're going to look at parents, and this is being filled at this stage from a parent's perspective. We'll see the children's perspective as well. Parents who are in urban cities, urban localities, you know, uh, professional parents usually, and uh, the kids are going to CBSE schools. We've already done this, by the way, as part of the no profile. Which, what are the problem? We've discussed this already. Again, disinterested kids, Expensive tutors, not reliable, grades are not happening. I'm just worried about my child's future. So guys, if you notice, by focusing on the, 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 the segment a little bit, narrowing it and doing our sessions we did earlier, talking to 150 odd parents, we're actually able to do justice to these two things. Which are the segments? Which problems are we trying to solve? And all along the way, please keep in mind, this is unlike unlike a 50 page business plan or even a 20 page business plan. We've seen all startups actually do a big print of this 
and uh, okay before ashish tell me i'll go off for a minute so they take a big print of this and post it in a wall in their office and and literally the reason we're showing post its is because these things change as they develop product as they market as they go to the market and market gives some feedback things are changing certainly as the growth things will change so this is simple but powerful in its impact so note we don't expect you to put tons of information here enough that it should fit on a post it literally this i'm sure we've heard about seen um, you know value proposition canvas also is trying to through its own way trying to see you know are we really addressing is our product and solution addressing the customer needs and wants and without getting into detail the fundamental point really is do we know do we have a sense of what the customer wants and what are we selling are we selling features or something else so folks tell me what is the difference between the left part of the screen and the right part of the screen the 3g mp3 player says something and the right part says something else what is the difference how is left different from the right okay left is more product details features right is what value you bring uh yeah feature list versus value or value again or, or benefit in some terms so folks yeah absolutely and please notice thank you vashnavi and please notice the right side has an emotional appeal to it relax any time just a feel of what this product will do to you yeah absolutely ashish as well look at this one you see this left side is yeah some features some sourcing organic whatever from himalayas the right one says this is the value to add to your life it will make you feel beautiful because you have shiny hair thanks to x or the product is now folks a lot of people say this is marketing this is branding this is gimmicky can be i'll i'll, I'll accept that i'll be honest about it but it doesn't have to be and as a founder you should always be thinking that you know what will what should i do so that my product kind of sell by itself sells itself and that happens if we focus on the value proposition the benefits that our customers can get from our product rather than get drowned in the thousand features which most uh product people get to okay i'm going to quickly walk you through uh absolutely right surya something that appeals to customer because see end of the day and thank you for using that word appeal surya because appeal can be yeah it, it does the job yeah i can do good shampoo but it makes you feel good as well the appeal is as emotional as it is functional because you know the studies after studies will tell us a lot of customer purchases that you and i do today a lot of decision making that is emotional we are we are fairly analytic in comparing which cell phone to buy and for but sometimes we'll buy the one that just feel like a good brand and and may not be anything else beyond that or because you know my my, my partner has it and it's good to have the same brand or make you feel cool whatever there could be some emotional reasons behind it value proposition means usp yes 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 so so ashish good question uh unique selling proposition i want you to think in terms of unique buying proposition if the moment you put a selling perspective your your, your mindset is different you try to convince somebody to buy your thing if you think of your product as a unique buying proposition that when customers buy it that experience is so enriching that they want to keep buying it over and over again so but it is in generic terms like the usp so for our friends who are doing the edtech startup look at the way they're doing they're not starting with the product they're starting with the customer for school children in classes 6 to 12 who want to learn and do well in school but find classes and books so boring and burdensome they've got a product called learn spark which lets kids learn in an immersive ar vr way and in doing so it makes kids excited about chapters and topics and concepts 
And the secret sauce, something that they are holding close to chess, is the patent pending AR, VR technology, headset, software, hardware, all of the firmware they were doing. So, so to answer your question, again, Ashish, let me go off so you can read it. USP is a combination of what you do, what your product does for the customer. It is not just your patent or the secret sauce. It is how it all comes together in the minds of the customers. Very simple template. People often use, by the way, the same template to do uh, elevator pitches, which we will do section nine. When we talk about uh, pitching, we'll come and revisit this and try to use this as well. So keeping that in mind, our team went and filled this up and said, okay, our USP is uh, at least in a tagline, but they had a lot more detail underneath this. Immersive and experiential learning, that changes lives. That's what resonated with them. Okay. A quick reminder, folks. Uh, I'm trying, I'm, we are recommending that you keep the business model canvas iterative and simple, but not too simple. And don't make it a check boxes. Okay, I've got these boxes. i got to put something in there. Let's just move, move on. This requires deep thinking and engagement with the market. It will not happen. You sit down in 15 minutes and Google your way and you can do it as a 0 0.01 version of the canvas, but a but lot of it requires conversation in the team and going out there before you can get all the uh, pieces together. Okay. Ajay, we're gonna do a... giving you a time check. It's okay. uh, 7.45. Thank you. Let's do a quick... Um, uh, okay, we'll, we'll play this game. You'll see... A value proposition, sometimes the tagline. And you have to tell me which of the five brand you think it comes, it's connected with. So how work should work sounds like which of these five brands? <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Ashish is asking if time can be extended. I understand we have blocked till 8.30. Is that correct, folks? Right, Arti? That's correct. Okay, so I think we should be okay, Ashish. Okay, in the meantime, this value proposition, this tagline, okay, possibly, if, if there's interest, we are happy to, as long as you're happy, as long as you are able to stay on, we are happy to extend. Okay, Upwork, which is, you know, it, it brings a lot of freelancers, uh, Mukesh, uh, Upwork it is, they're trying to change the way we do work by engaging freelancers and gig workers. We'll see Slack as well. Okay, this is easy. Who says, you know, our USP, our value proposition, our tagline is, we will make you, help you write great stuff in a very simple way. Yep. I'm a big fan of Grammarly and they've really changed the way we all write, right? In the last, what, two, three years, only three, four years. Grammarly it is. Great writing, simplified. Design more, this should be easy. This should be easy. Design more engaging virtual events. Who amongst these five is you think doing this? Uh, uh, Rashmita, thank you. Zoom, it is. <laughs> Zoom and Badwani live stream. Thank you, Sunita. We're actually, <laughs> so good point here. We're trying to use our platform and live stream and, and uh, mighty networks all together to create engaging experiential events like the one you're attending right now. And anybody who guessed Slack earlier, this is the one, this is their tagline. One platform that brings the team together. That only leaves one more. This is very interesting. This one comes from, there's only one candidate left, so I won't let you guess. Uh, this is Expedia. They're a travel aggregator. Uh, and Microsoft is big time behind them to say, okay, we will help you get the best travel deals so that you can make the most of your travels. So folks, very interesting. We can go on on this topic of value proposition, elevator pitching, USP, tagline. But within the segment we mentioned earlier, this should resonate with your customers. It's not just good copy, good English, good grammar. It should tell the customer, yeah, they're doing something that's important to me. They're actually bringing my team together if I'm using Slack. Okay, we'll keep moving. Uh, do you know uh, do you know Coca-Cola formula while Coca-Cola is bottled around the world do you know the secret the recipe 
is held closely by the family even till today and you know for how long they've had the secret formula any guesses how many years just type for how many years has the coca and it still is the coke formula ah there you are yeah in that range close to 150 think about it it's very hard to have to have a huge empire like coke and and with bottlers around the world and distributors there are only very very few people who keep the formula close to their uh, chest and make sure it helps them get that advantage over pepsi and others so folks so i use the word earlier secret sauce or the secret formula or something that gives you a moat or a defense can come from multiple places it could be a recipe as with coke or by the way kfc the masalas that kfc uses is still the full recipe is not known to anybody yet it could come from that uh, you heard uh, Gita, you heard Ashwarya, both have filed patents for their products. So patent could be your moat or your um, secret sauce. Uh, there are startups. Think about it. One of the reasons is the WhatsApp technology was not, in hindsight, not that, not that innovative. What worked was that in very short span of time, and the same story with Facebook, they have such huge network effect. There are so many users piled on that it's very hard for somebody else to take that on. In today's environment, of course, being the first mover, having a big VC behind you uh, also helps. All of these are multiple ways of creating your differentiation so that your others can't attack you and you can continue to do well. Many, many ways to do it. Most companies have more than one way of doing it. This company, back to our ed tech, said, listen, we filed a patent the way we are doing digital content creation and digital con uh, content um, rendering uh, with, with the AR VR is unique to us. And that really is our moat. Plus the fact there's no one out there who's covering the entire CBSE curriculum, class 6 to 12. You give us a topic, we've got it covered. They felt that was their unfair advantage for the moat that can't be easily copied. A quick comment here, while this is about a strategic tool, uh, it's largely about where you are today and where you want to go in the very near future. Uh, just be careful, just make sure your post-its are not that far apart, that you know your patent is as of today, but your custom segments are what you will get to after five years. So make sure it is, you're in the same time zone, more or less. Okay, here's an interesting one, but it's a new, Concert in town, a new brand of phone, uh, a new another event, uh, clothing. Uh, how do you come to know that something new is happening around you today? While you do that, so a mode and USB are connected. Now, your USB usually comes from the moat plus a few other things. For example, you may say my moat is the patent I filed so nobody can copy my idea, but my USP is the experience that I build on top of that. My, my headsets in of themselves don't give an experience the way I write my software, my UI, UX, that really is my USP that draws uh, children and uh, parents to me. So they're connected. Okay, how do you come to know what's... What? Okay, uh, Ashish, the word is moat, M-O-A-T. Uh, it's a very simple English word. If you if you look at the way uh, how old castles were built, forts were built, they had this uh, little canal, nala, uh, uh, at its periphery so that people couldn't come uh, enter or climb the walls. And they had these bridges that they could draw up and down, right? So that moat, that nala is what's preventing others to come into your territory. Okay, and I didn't realize my camera was off. Okay, here we are. Um, so how do you come to know what's happening in the world? New app is getting launched. New t-shirts are coming. IPL is getting started. Uh, Women's Day happened. Uh, how, do you know, how do you get to know new products, new services? Anybody? Just give me one or two examples. A new phone is launched. And how do you come to know that, hey, I got to check it out? Social media, thank you, Vinayak. What else? News. News could be, I'm extrapolating, news could be TV news, it could be newspapers, it could be 
uh, shorts, anywhere, any of the Google News. Okay. One more ads. Absolutely right, Sunita. This could be uh, you know digital ads you see at the top on your apps or on the on, on the screens or website you visit. Or this could be again newspaper ads, radio ads, TV ads, all of those. So folks, there's many many ways of taking the message out there. What we want to drive home here, and this is, I've seen it as an investor. I see is probably issue number one or two with most investments that I've already made. That they are great product people. They're very good in connecting with customers, but they're not good at talking about themselves. They're not good at promoting themselves to their potential customers. It could be PR, which is not here, but PR is very important, right? You get covered in stories and articles and news, news, uh, news pieces, or going to the existing customers and saying, "Hey, uh, you're happy with what we do? Can you refer two of your friends?" Or looking at your website, website and saying, "Can I do a serious SEO on it so that I, I come up on the top?" Or taking the time to write on LinkedIn blogs so there's that much more interest and awareness building. Folks, please, please, please do not underplay the importance of marketing and channels that you use it. And you see eight channels here. In reality, you could use twenty channels. Practically. I've seen startups try try three, four, five channels, and maybe up to five, six channels, and three, four usually work. Two or three work better than the others, and so they zoom in on slowly. But please, 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 while you're developing the product, while you're iterating through the MVP, while you're building a team, think of how the message goes out. The channel here is physical or digital ways of letting the world know, hey, I exist. Come to me. I'll do a great job of solving your problem. Not as easy as it sounds. Not as easy as it sounds. So, but it's also fun, by the way. Uh, we were doing a we were doing campus um, uh, at, at a campus in Delhi last week. We were recruiting for a startup, so we put out the uh, put out. Uh, we didn't give uh, roles. We got tons of roles for that startup. Guess what? Sixty percent of the people who applied for internship for that startup said we want to do social media marketing. So there's interest. It, I think it's exciting, uh, and social media is not the only media, but nevertheless, the world is changing. Please don't ignore marketing channels and sales and all the other things that we do. And that's what this startup did. They said we're going to focus at least to reach parents. We're going to do newspapers, inserts, LinkedIn, etc. With kids, they were trying different channels, but those are the channels they wanted to use to reach the parents. And that's that box right there for you. And a reminder here: Canvas is iterative; will not happen first instance. Okay, um, here's another interesting exercise. In the interest of time, okay, let's do a few. Which of the brands on the right, eight brands, eight brands, <laughs> is mostly known for its franchising? Most of its revenue comes from a franchisee model of operations. Any guesses? Is it HP? Is it Dropbox? It is. Is it McDonald's? Is it YouTube? Who's really known for mastering franchising? As their uh, McD. There you go. Yeah, Surya, speaking from experience. Absolutely right. And while others may do it, I'm just picking a few names. Which one of these does a great job of freemium? Many people do freemium today. But uh, of the ones you see. You want to guess? YouTube, YouTube has premium. Dropbox has premium. Yep, absolutely right. I'm going to go on and show you another one, which is a lot more interesting. Subscription, we all know. We all do Netflix. So I won't. I won't go there. Very interesting um, model, revenue model called Hook and Bait. Does anybody want to guess who does this? Which company? Very interesting. They actually pioneered this model. I mean, many others are using it now. We are looking at ways in which companies make money, and often each company has multiple things happening. They may have a hook and bait model around with franchise, or may have subscription along with the freemium model. What is hook and bait? And one can be simple retail, right? Buy at hundred, sell at one hundred twenty. Simple markup model. 
Ah, Vinayak is on the right track. Gillette is a good answer, although it's not on the list. But but Vinayak, I think you're getting the point. For amongst the brands here, it is HP, and here's a very interesting way in which HP makes money. Uh, if you think about it, an HP laser printer. Thank you, Surya. You're right there. Absolutely there. A HP laser printer you can buy for what? Under three thousand bucks, right? And and but when you try to get the cartridges replaced, and I'm assuming you're doing original cartridge replaced and not the refills. Each cartridge is what seven eight hundred bucks. Color one even more. So think about it. In your life, you may have ten fifteen cartridges. You more than paid five x, maybe ten x of the printer cost. Now to make sure you stick to this formula, companies like HP actually are selling their printer at a loss. The printer may actually make them cost them four thousand to make, but they'll sell it for three thousand because they think you're hooked onto buying the cartridges where they make most of their products. Very interesting. So, folks, what we're discussing here are different ways in which you can generate revenues. Please keep in mind every startup has multiple. Okay, Ashish, I'll let you read the list. Um, multiple ways to generate revenues, and usually it is. One or two that click for you through some experimentation, and which is what this startup is trying to do. And they said, "Okay, we will do a direct B two C sales to parents." But there's something else they did. They said, "We'll do direct B two C sales." There's an upfront pricing and there's a subscription pricing. They're using a combination. And the numbers I've taken liberty with, but the model, by the way, is absolutely what they were doing. And they're saying, okay, not just figuring out which revenue model to use, how to charge our customers, and what quantum to charge. They actually went ahead and said, okay, let's actually create a little bit of a projection for the next few months. Please keep in mind, for a startup that's just figuring out, that's just made no sales so far, or may have just made the ten sales, it's unfair to expect a detailed two-year financial projection. As an investor. I used to ask for that for early stage, and you know what? I did get Excel files, but it's full of stories. Real, no foundation. Just because it is hundred rupees year one, just multiply it and say, okay, it'll be two x next year. So two hundred and two x thereafter, there'll be four hundred. And very hard, and I realize it's unfair. So our recommendation to founders is be disciplined, be thoughtful about your numbers, be conscious of your cash flow pricing models, you know, expenses. uh but don't go into the la la land talking about a five year projection when you still haven't figured out your product that well your product market hasn't quite gelled it together cost structure is financial projection financial projections has multiple angles ashish if you look at this slide right now first it's saying on what which segment are you going after in this we said you know parents urban da 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 what is your mode of charging them premium plus upfront cost whatever 1000 rupees 1200 rupees How often annual premium, and then you will see projections, which are projections of both revenues and costs. If you see, at the top they're saying how much money will they make. Don't worry about specific numbers, but they're saying from each stream we'll make five five plus six, and then we have cost of people, technology, hardware, marketing, ad, da da da. And so far they look it looks like they're going to be short by nine lakhs in the first six months. How to make up for this nine lakhs? Is this nine lakhs realistic? Or is it more like ninety lakhs? We will discuss in the next few sessions, and we'll bring it all together in the fundraising <clears throat> session, session number nine, where we actually have to go to an investor and say, "Okay, Ms. Investor, can you put fifty lakhs, one crore, in my business? Because here are my projections, and the projections are a little more detailed." Uh, financial projections, Ashish, has both revenues and costs. You see the revenue box separately, cost box separately. So financial projection is a big thing. It has pieces in it, and cost is one such piece. And that's what the team did. They took these, and if you look at the boxes at the bottom, which is revenue stream and cost, they basically took that summary on a post-it and put it out there. Almost there. Just one thing missing in our canvas. Quickly. What is missing still? We've talked about customer segment. We've talked about value proposition. We said how we're going to market it. We're going to talk about features, some bit of solution. We talked about features. 
uh, we also said broadly how much will we spend and how much will we make. What is missing quickly, guys? Which box is still blank? And by the way, this is a simplified version of the link, guys. You can get into more details. Thank you. Just making sure you're paying attention. That's all. It's obvious. That's the only box. Now we talk about metrics. What are metrics? By the way, this particular canvas doesn't talk that concretely about competitors, partners, and team, but we will, of course, cover it as part of our series. What are metrics for a startup? Okay, let's make it even simpler. When you think of a startup, what measurements, I'm using the word very loosely here, what measurements you definitely want to have with you for any startup? Early stage, growth stage, fintech, deep tech, doesn't matter. Give me some numbers. Okay. Thank you, Kriti. Revenue and profit, very basic, but very fundamental. Absolutely right. NPS, if I may qualify, Paco, is net promoter score, which is also a measure of how delighted slash satisfied your customers are with what you're doing. Sales, of course. Sales and, and uh, this could be number of units sold, the uh, dollar figure. Uh, number of customers you have, and if I may add, you know, number of paying customers versus number of free users. What kind of money are you burning? As you saw earlier, looked like they were going to be burning net net nine lakhs in the next six months. The, the startup we saw, they're going to be short by that much. Business scenario, yes, but we'll have to put some metrics around it. Ashish, sales growth, actually, good point, Surya. For all the numbers you said, whether it's sales or cost or revenues or customers, one is the absolute number, the other is the growth rate. <clears throat> So are we growing at 10% versus 50% and very important for a, for an investor. Oh, thank you. We know another good one. We talked about NPS that tells you quantitatively how happy people are, but the real happiness is they bought it once, but they come back again, even better level of happiness. I bought it and I recommend my cousin also to buy it for me. And in doing so, we talked so much about uh marketing and making sure we we we, uh, we are able to make that uh proposition to our customers and there's a cost involved in that that's the cost of acquisition we'll talk about that uh marketing sales etc all put together it's not free it's not free social media channels may be free you may have a free post on facebook every day twice a day for insta and one twice a week and for linkedin that's fine but the act of putting that post, creating it, takes finite time and hence cost. So there's cost of marketing for some hidden, some explicit. And of course, in the as Paco says, you know, if somebody is going to be with you for 10 years, in those 10 years, what is the expected uh, revenue and profit they can generate for you? Very absolutely right. Great number that you shared. Great example. I'm going to share a simple set here. This is not an exhaustive list. <clears throat> For each startup, this varies. But here are some common ones. One, one is around revenues. You mentioned a lot of these, right? Revenue, recurring revenue on a monthly basis. How much is each customer paying you? We've talked about number of users. We've talked about customer acquisition. Um, cost per lead, I mentioned. Facebook may appear, to, may appear to be free, but probably isn't. We also talked about the rate at which not just you acquire new customers, but at which you lose customers. That's the churn. NPS and at least a two dozen more. <clears throat> so there's no dearth of metrics out there. We have to be careful about which metrics to choose. I've seen startups go crazy. Just like I mentioned, they go crazy with financial planning, and Excel sheet after Excel sheet after Excel sheet of detail, uh, not founded in too much real data. Similarly, they go over. Actually, they I've seen both extremes. They some underwhelm me with the metrics they have, and they would only have mostly revenues and profits. And often they were overwhelmed with having 30 metrics. I think you need to find a reasonable number, Ashish, that's what I'm getting to. You need to get to a reasonable number that gives you a sense of how well your plane is flying. In a cockpit, there are 50 instruments, but ask any pilot. They'll say, okay, these four are super critical. If these four are out of whack, I don't care. I'm in danger. So please pick the three, four, five, six that are super critical for you. My strong recommendation, pick at least a couple are related to direct customers, customer experience, customer churn rate, customer referral rate, NPS, et cetera. 
pick a few around finances as well, right? Revenues, cost, profits, etc. And while it's not shown here, as you grow, some metrics around measuring your team's motivation and engagement levels are also important. So Ashish, we will get to that perhaps in two weeks from now. As we get started, as we get geared up to launch, what specific metrics to define given our industry? Are you a SaaS company? Are you a product company, etc.? cetera? Um, <laughs> thank you, Paco, for helping me out. But Surya, in a nutshell, it's a single number that tells you how delighted your customers are with you. And, be and because they're so delighted, they're happy to recommend others to you. But there's a lot more out there. I'm, I'm oversimplifying it. Okay. So this is the completed canvas from a parent's perspective. You can do a similar, you should do a similar exercise for kids' perspective. They did a partial job here. I'm sharing it with you just to leave it with you as a thought. Okay, Ashish, I'm off. So this, if you look at it, we went into so many details. But ultimately, it should all come together and tell a story. That for segment A, this is how we're going to add value and make money. For segment B, this is how we're going to sell and make money and all the other things here in the middle. This is not just your business model canvas or lean canvas. This, folks, is your business. If you are not sure of any of the building blocks initially, fine, go figure it out. Please, it, you will never be able to run a business if any of these blocks is missing. Or you say, I don't know. It's okay in the early parts of I don't know many of these. You'll have blanks. You'll experiment, figure it out. It'll be a little rough. You'll refine it. That's fine. But let's say you're facing an investor and say, yeah, yeah, yeah I, I got my lean canvas figured out. But this this one box, you know, around metrics, I'm still stuck in. Won't sell. It cannot sell because it's not a, the right way to build a business, not because it's a bad pitch. Or to say, you know, I, I don't have a, you know, my solution for everybody. Remember that example we took last time? Uh, toothbrushes made of bamboo. One way, one uh, way of looking at it is, listen, everybody's a customer for me. Out of the 8 billion people, at least 7 billion minus infants, etc. That's my market. And we said, no, 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 that's not realistic. We kept shrinking it. Remember, that 7 billion market became, uh, I figured, around 40 odd million dollars market. Because you chose to operate in certain uh, geographies and segments. Okay, now, if you wish to talk and ask questions around this, Please raise your hand. We'll have the mics. We'll have the mic handed over to you. Any question on what a lean canvas is or what it isn't, how to go about building it, and and the idea I'm reiterating, it's I'm reiterating that it's an iterative process. It will take a few time to get it sorted with. But I've also realized, by the way, doing this together with your co-founders, team members, is a great team building exercise. It's a great team alignment exercise because you actually don't know. One founder may have a certain view on what is your moat, what is your secret recipe, when somebody else may have different. One founder may think that subscription is the way to go, while another founder may think, no, no, that's a tried and tested and failed model in this industry, and we should try something else. So it's a great opportunity to get a strategic view of your business. If you can have the mic to Ashish, please, uh, to look at the various moving parts that come together, get the team aligned, and always, always, always think customers. Okay, folks, can we have the mic to Ashish, please? And Ashish, other than taking my video off, which I will do anyway, so you can read, you can ask us anything. Mic going to Ashish? Can somebody confirm, please? Ashish, you want to try typing in? I'm not sure if the mic process is working here. Do you want to try typing in? Ashish? Arti, can you hear me? Yes, Ajay, you're clear. Okay. So, mic uh, not yet reached Ashish, I guess. Uh, Mike has reached Ashish. Uh, ah, there you are. been invited as a speaker, Ashish. So you can try. Okay, thank you, Vinayak. Go ahead, Ashish. Would love to hear your voice. You've been super participative. So I would really want to thank you first for being there in all these sessions and asking very interesting questions. Go ahead. Hmm. 
Okay. Not sure what's happening there. Ashish, if you have issues with the mic, you can absolutely type your question and we'll be happy to take that on. Others as well, feel free. If you want to type your question, that's fine. Uh, if you want to speak. No, Ashish, we can't hear you. Sorry. Ashish, can you please type your question in some technical issue? We can't hear you. Okay, while we wait for Ashish to come in, let me bring it all together. So this is a map, as I was saying, this is not just pieces, but a big picture view of your business. Uh, you will take some time getting there. And as you are building the house, some bit of the map might be changing and that's fine. As long as you're not shaking the foundation. For example, the foundation, you can't be one year into the process and say, listen, I started by addressing one problem, but I'm actually building a solution for another. Uh, that's a foundational, we can do it, of course, but that's it's good to recognize that. So this is what we are saying. Please take a strategic view of your business. Please think outside in. Don't jump into coding the moment you have a problem or an idea. Please think customers. Because that's the only way this blueprint will be accurate and good. So if you're referring to the marketing four P's, yes, it will be part of your marketing strategy, Ashish. Uh, is the subject matter expertise for, uh, uh, can be that be a USP? It can be. Uh, I'll give you an example. If you recall uh, Geeta, who was there in session one, uh, she came from a background from uh, Indian Institute of Science, PhD, deep experience in some of the areas, not direct areas in medicine, but at least computer science and AI. She used her SME to be one of the USPs for her business, one of the USPs. Uh, the product and the patent, of course, is the other one. And the way I think she was able to, I know it because I've been talking to her, the way she was able to actually market her solution to uh, the first 30, 40 hospitals was amazing. Because then the word of, word of mouth spread. Hospitals started talking, there was a lot of buzz around it. So her USP became that initial network that she created. Okay, so folks, as we wrap it up, I am back to the platform that I keep talking about. We are super excited about it. Uh, all that we're discussing, the video, if you will, of this session, along the, with the templates we've been sharing from day one till the session today, they're all out there on the platform. Just a little bit of poking around and you can find them. Uh, we are very, we are very excited to give you an option to, as I've been saying all along, document your thoughts, reflections, ideas in a private mode. That's the journal that's out there. Uh, the journal will help you introspect as well as make some tangible uh, movement forward. Surya, you asked uh, 184 crore question right here. How to build teams, and and we are very big on this being the the top three, if not the focus for a startup uh, in today's environment, given the pressure and competition on talent and disruption and how quickly, you know, one startup outplays, outpaces the other. Uh, my strong, we can talk on this for, okay, days, but 90 minutes for sure in exactly two weeks from now. So yeah, we have a session coming up. We have the open house next week. The week after that, we have a session on exactly this how to build this super effective team that can do magic for us. Yeah, Sugumar, please stay with the whole program. Lot more detail coming in two weeks to you. With that, uh, I'm going to invite, uh, I don't know who's here, is Gagan here? It will be Sudhanshu who will take Sudhanshu? Okay. So my colleague Sudhanshu will take you to this journal entry. And uh, of course, he'll give you a little walkthrough of how this uh, platform works. Plus, take you specifically in uh, to a place where you can enter your thoughts. So, Nanshu, over to you, please. So, yes. So, once you uh, open uh, your uh, platform, so if you haven't joined the cohort, you have to first of all go to 
they are open, you have to open a new tab where you have to simply write type community dot wf global dot org. If you haven't joined the cohort yet, you have to go under the academy section, and from here you have to select your cohort. It would say WN Think Startup Cohort 001. So you will land to this page. You will see seminar session resources. So you have to go to this section named resources. Here you'll see there are different sections, series overview, my journal, session material, take action. So you have to first, so today as we are on session five, we're going to talk about uh, session five only business models that help build viable startups. So just click on this tab. You can click on this expand button to see it in our full screen. I hope you guys are able to follow these steps. If any of you are facing any such issue, just uh, drop a text on the chat. I'm waiting on this particular page for the next two, three seconds. Just give a thumbs up if you're able to follow these steps. Ashish, Shudhya, Kriti, are you guys able to reach to this page? So I'm assuming you guys, uh, okay, Ashish. So I'm just going back to this section again, closing this. Yes. Can you see this, this resources page? So if you haven't joined the cohort, let me um, tell you this. You have to go to the academy. Under this, you will see WN Things Startup Cohort page. You have to join this and once you join this, you will see this window opening in front of your screen. You have to go to the resources section. So you will see section of each of the sessions which we had in the past. So you can see session one, two, three, four, five. So today, as we are in the middle of uh, session five, business model that help viable startup. So I'm going to take you through this page. So click on this. And from here, you can expand this. So a page like this should open for all of you. Next, I want you guys to click on, you want, I want you to open uh, another tab. You can see that uh, there is an icon called Airtable. So click uh, another tab and type Airtable.com. So once you enter it, you'll see a page like this opening in front of you. So even if you're not able to type, you can click it from here as well. So once you click, a new page like this will open in front of you. Can you see this scheme? Are you guys able to see this screen? The table page, can one of you just uh, text on the chat? It's visible. Okay. So yes. So once you visit this page, you see this landing page. So here you have to go a little down, you'll see all these options, continue with Google, continue with single sign on, continue with Apple. So I'm assuming most of us have the Gmail account. So we have what we can do. We can continue with our Google account. Just click on it. Just select your uh, Gmail account. You must uh, have to sign in in the other tab. Click on the allow button. Okay, so it has directly um, um, took me to this page. I, we can't see anything else on the screen, by the way. It just stuck on my journal session five. 
Oh, okay. Wait, give me a minute. I'm wondering. So uh, I'm wondering because um, um, many folks have issues. Is there an? I mean, of course, we'll continue taking your input. But is there an email ID mm-hmm. you can reach out to, to and later for clarifications? Yes, yes, they can. So if you can put it in the chat, please. So, folks, as much as we are able to take uh, provide clarity in this session right now, uh, and of course, so that you will keep walking through it. You can also write back later on that email ID. Yes, is it changing now? Try something, Zuganshu. Try clicking. Yeah, 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 now it's yeah, yeah. Windows. yeah. Now it's now it is. So, guys, um, let me go back then again. Um, so this page will open up when you click on the My Journal, and it will ask you to uh, sign in to your Airtable account. So this is a one-time thing. Once you log in, and you'll be sorted for the rest of the session. So please. Simply click uh, here. It will. There will be a, another tab which will open up in front of you. So let me log it out because uh, I followed this step and it has already logged in. So yeah. So the page like this will open up in front of you. So what you can either, if you don't have any Gmail Hotmail account, you can uh, enter your uh, if other email address. Otherwise, most of us are using Gmail account, so you simply have to continue with your Gmail account. So click on it. And there will be a message which will uh, open up in front of you. So currently, because I have already logged in, so it has uh, opened uh, this particular page in front of me. So now go back to the previous tab. You have to simply refresh the page, which is your platform page. And after refreshing it, you will be able to see the form embedded here. Just wait for a few seconds. Yes. So the Bob form is visible now. So in case you don't click on this link, uh, it will uh, if uh, will open up in a, another window. So you should reach on this page. So are you guys able to see this? Are you able to follow all these steps? Can one of you confirm on the chat? Surya, Wilson, Ashish, are you guys able to follow these steps? In the meantime, so Anshu, you want to you want to put in the email ID? They can contact you on. Sure. Yeah. Oh, very good. Thank you. And as as you saw the questions, uh, the question was short, but uh, it gave you a little box to enter text. That so that's free flowing text. Uh, again, asking you to reflect on the journey, your connections, leverage the platform. So, um, so I've dropped my uh, email address. You guys can reach out to to me uh, for the further clarification if perfect, you face any perfect. such issue. So please, uh, it's a request. Please use the same email address for uh, the upcoming session as well as for your seamless journey. So let's go to the session five. You have already seen the questions. I have already added uh, my email address, and let me add the link of uh, this uh, particular page in the chat window so that uh, you guys can uh, directly come to this uh, space. Yeah, yes, yeah, yes, yeah, Surya. It probably is a Safari issue. So please try some uh, Chrome or something else. Ashish, the mail ID is in the chat. So Danshu dot Mishra at wfglobal.org. I'm dropping my number as well in case uh, you face any issue. If I'm late in reverting to your email address, you can quickly directly reach out to me. Yeah. Yeah, so that should be the infinite displays happen. So you... Oh, okay, okay, okay. Let me close these tabs. I think I was frequently switching between the windows, which is why I did. Is it normal now? Is it normal now? Are you guys able to see it now, or still uh, multiple windows? In? Okay.
Is it normal for you guys now? Just check. So yes, I let me tell you about uh, other Momo features as well. So from here, you can uh, uh, reach out to us and other uh, participants as well. You have to click on the chat window. You'll find a search bar here. You'll see all these uh, participants and members here. So you can uh, click on it, click on the app chat and select any of the participant and you can directly reach out to us. Yeah. Further, you can, uh, if you have any questions or if you have any query, you can quickly go to this section. Or from here, you can share your thoughts, your questions, and one of us will reach out to you. No audio. Hmm. Guys, I'm now audible now. Am I audible now? Okay. So yes, uh, Ajay, uh, over to you now. Uh, well, last thing, guys. So once you open this my general section, you have to fill all these questions. And uh, once you fill, record all these question uh, uh, answers. You can't change it. Uh, so be care careful when you are submitting your assignments. Then there are uh, other uh, sections that are called take action. From here, you uh, you have to simply click, and you don't have to log into your Airtable accounts again. You'll see. Your assignments here. And here is your submission. So once you're done with this, you have to fill your submission. Yes, Ajay, over to you now. Uh, give us a minute. It seems that Ajay has been uh, knocked out of the platform. He's just coming back in a second. Yeah. I hope uh, you all have noted down my email address and contact number. And meanwhile, you can reach out to me on the chat window as well. Hello. Am I audible? Yes, Vinay. Yes, Vinay, you are. Oh, all right, all right. Thank you very much for explaining us everything. I I thought I got kicked out of it, so I uh, might. Yeah, have... there was some technical issue for a few seconds. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah. Thank God it was nothing uh, serious enough to write a mail about it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, sorry, my session got knocked out. So, uh, so Dansha, you done with the walkthrough? Yes, uh, Ajay. Okay, if I could be, if you could make me yeah, the speaker again, so Dansha, please, I'll close the session. And if you could unshare your screen. Okay. Okay, we're back on. So thank you, folks. Sorry, I, I missed the last two minutes, perhaps, Lancho. I hope uh, the walkthrough was okay. But um, nevertheless, uh, please do reach out to us through that email ID and slash phone number. So Lancho is shared. Vinak, I'm audible, right? Yes, sir, you are. Vinak? Uh, yes, sir. Am I audible? Hello, yes. Am I audible? Guys, am I audible? 
I guess there is some problem uh, from Sir's end. I guess we'll wait for him to join. Uh, he might be here in a second till the time. Okay, so till he joins, maybe uh, I can entertain you guys. Uh, I, of course, have a change of seating here uh, for myself. Uh, I guess he got kicked out. So we can wait for him. And um, to the 25 participants, uh, if there is any problem, uh, you have been given an email. You can, of course, reach out to that. And uh, yes, so... Uh, I am still audible though, right? Let me just check if I am not kicked out. Right, one in the chat if I'm audible. Okay. Yeah, I am still audible. I think Ajay is having some difficulties to join in again. So, okay. uh, folks, we've as such come to the end of the session. I think Ajay has covered whatever needs to be done for today. But we are looking forward to seeing all of you next week because that's going to be a really, really exciting session. It's all about AMA. Uh, so, Vinayak, would you want to tell them what this is about? Of course, of course. It's about Ask Me Anything. It's going to be an amazing session where you can ask, sir, actually. You can ask all the craziest, simplest, smartest, stupidest questions you have. You can ask him about, you know, how to start a business right from scratch. You can ask him interesting questions about the business model canvas, which we discussed today. Because, uh, you know, uh, we've gotten chance to ask a lot of the guest entrepreneur's question so far, but I feel like we know Ajay Sir the best so far because he's someone who has actually taught his ideas, taught what he did himself to us. So yes, if there is any session I would say you should not miss, then it is definitely the next one. The next mm-hmm. session is like the special episode of KBC. Where, uh, Absolutely. Where uh, Amitabh fact, Bachchan plays. Yeah. So yeah. Like I, In fact, what I would say is that... more, I missed an important point. I just realized because that screen uh, screen was flickering. So I missed an important point to mention. Let me yeah, so quickly that, so share my that, screen. Let's just quickly tell them what the AMA is about. And yes, you yes. Your, you know, your uh, screen in the meanwhile. What, yes. uh, guys, what we would like you to come prepared is that we've done a lot of you know, uh, discussions on idea validation. We've talked about MVP and today we've covered business models. And these are very, very important uh, pieces of information, especially if you're looking at doing your own startup. So we would urge you once more to look at the various material which has been shared with you on the platform, try it out, go out, speak to customers and come back with real questions that you faced. If you've not been able to find some answers on these topics, this is your chance to really go deep dive and see what your questions are, what is the kind of answers that Ajay is able to help you so that you move forward in this journey with us. Yeah, so that's what the next session is all going to be all about. With that, let me hand over to Sudhanshu so that he can yes. cover what he needs. So, yeah. so guys, when uh, you'll go to uh, this section, session material, you have simply have to expand. And yeah, when you go down, you'll see the entire agenda of the session. Some of you m- might have joined this session a bit late and must have missed the initial 15, 20, 30 minutes of the session. So after this session, your session recording will be up- uh, uploaded here. You can check it out tomorrow for the recording. And from here, you can see the quick recap of the session. A brief about the upcoming session is going to be update is already updated here. So the next session, the next session's uh, live stream link is going to be here. So do check it out thoroughly in the platform. And in case you find any issues or any doubts, just feel free to reach out to me on my email address. This is over to you, Vinayak. Right. So thank you very much for explaining that. Um, thank you everyone for joining this. We had 25 participants today and all of them were very uh, engaging, I must say, because uh, it was quite an interactive section uh, session. And I must say this was one of the more difficult sessions, especially considering we were really getting into the terminologies. We were you know, really trying to understand what a business model canvas is which is uh, one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, I remember when I first learned it, I had no business idea myself, but I would go out to people who had business ideas and just make 
business model canvases for them. Uh, and I got to be known as the BMC guy in my campus. But uh, thank you very much for uh, attending everyone. I'm not sure we have Sir yet with us, but uh, thank you very much, Ajay Sir, for having the session. Thank you very much, Sudhanshu. Thank you very much to everyone, especially um, the ones who are joining us from phone. Thank you for being patient. And uh, once again, tomorrow's session is going to be the best session so far and the most important one. By tomorrow, I mean the next week's session is going to be one of the best sessions. And uh, I hope you all join us. And yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.